Do you carry a picture of yourself in your wallet? I assume if you have a driver's license, you do. Do you like that picture? Are you happy with how you look? What about the picture you carry of yourself in your heart? Today, Nathan Thurber joins me on the set to discuss that. I think you'll not want to miss this. God's love, elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Great to see you today. We're going to have a fantastic half hour talking about, I didn't want to say it in the intro because it sounds kind of heavy. You know, in the, in, in, in the Bible, when you study the Bible, you have words like redemption and reconciliation and justification and and people kind of have an idea what these words mean. Today we're going to deal with a word that isn't mentioned very op- often, adoption. In fact, that word often has a negative connotation. Possibly it does anyhow. And I think, whoa, this is going to be an eye-opener today. You're going to have, have just great insights. Today we're also offering, you'll see that. I'm not going to mention it much, but you will see it at the bottom of the screen. Can you see what God sees? And it, it kind of links in a little bit, but we're going to share it today. Nathan Thurber is here with me. So, Nathan, I look forward because what, this, what we're going to do, I'm going to be like kind of the one that pulls it out of you here. Okay, all right. I heard you teach. Hopefully I won't be too hard at pulling. <laughs> no, but. You know, not like pulling teeth, but I heard you teach a message on, on this topic, which I said sounds a little heavy adoption, but it's actually very good. Yeah. And, uh, and so I said, come and share that because I think people will so much benefit from it. So we're going to get to that in a moment. But first, every week we release a little three-minute video clip called Jesus in Three. You can see it on Facebook, on our website. Take a look at this. In Luke chapter 19, verse 9, Jesus is speaking inside the house of what we call a known mobster of that day, a mafioso, Zacchaeus. And he says in verse 9, Today salvation has come to this house, for he, referring to Zacchaeus, He is also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Uh, To the people, Zacchaeus definitely was not a son of Abraham, because to be a son of Abraham meant you were a part of God's covenant of blessing. And to the people, Zacchaeus could not possibly be blessed. He was a a, a known criminal. He was an immoral person. He was an irreligious person. He was a person who had been ostracized by society. So there was no way that he could be included as a son of Abraham. But Jesus is saying, the ones that you have excluded, God has included. And so salvation belongs to him because he's not like you think. He's not one of the excluded ones. He is an included one. He is the son of Abraham. And then he says, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus has come for that purpose. And whatever Jesus's purpose was is God's purpose, because God is exactly like Jesus, as we have shared many times. And so to seek that which is lost, the word lost implies something of great value, great, great value. For most people today, the, our telephone is very valuable because we put all the information and contact addresses, notes to ourselves. We save documents on our telephones. If you lose your telephone, let's face it, you, you, you better start looking. Or imagine if, if, if you lose your ring, like a wedding ring. This is the ring Tyna gave me. And actually, there's a dove depicted on this ring, so it, it, it's, it's like a reminder of the Holy Spirit. If I lost it, I, would, I wouldn't stop looking until I found it. It's valuable. Imagine if you have a little toddler at the picnic, and you look up, and that toddler is gone. My goodness, you can't finish your food. You've you, you got to go looking because something of value is gone. That's what God is saying. Every human has great value. And when someone is lost, it means lost from God's perspective, wandered away from God's perspective, not where they were supposed to be. Something valuable is lost. Come back to the God who loves you. That's what Jesus tells us. That's God's attitude towards people. Let's have the same attitude. That grips my heart. 
that God says of every one of us that, that we are so valuable. And that's what salvation is all about. And, and if you would like to receive this, you say, I'd like to be restored. I'd like to come back to be in that love zone, in that love walk, in that love union with God. I welcome you to do so. If you will call the number on the screen, someone will pray with you. Or, or, or in fact, Nathan, I think I, this, I got a little touched by what I saw there. Let's pray right now. I know we're just minutes into the program. If you say, I want to be restored to God, I feel like my life is an aimless wandering. I want that. Would you just say like this? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you that Jesus put away my sin and shame. Thank you that Jesus rose from the dead, conquering evil. And Jesus, come and live in me now. And then just take a moment and just lift your hand and say, Thank you, Lord. And then... Uh, just call the number on the screen and we'll send you this little booklet. Just say, I just prayed with Peter on television. Please send me the booklet, Salvation, God's Gift to You. And uh, wow, I believe God is touching you. I didn't plan on doing that, but God is touching somebody. We want to hear from you. Nathan, that's how it goes. Sometimes we do something within didn't plan right. in the program. Yeah. It wasn't a part of it, but I just felt like, oh, how much God loves us. So, one of the aspects of this awesome salvation what God has done for us is adoption. Now, what I'm going to do here for the rest 22, 23 minutes, you can turn into look into that camera over there, and I'll interrupt you once in a while, but talk, let me be my opening question. What do you mean when you say we are adopted? What, what, what meaning does that word adoption have in the context we are talking about right now? Well, Pastor Peter, you... you you, you said it in your Jesus in three, and I'll, I'll draw us back to that, the value that God placed on us in making us sons and daughters. Zacchaeus, the, 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 the gentleman that Pastor Peter mentioned, that he, God made him a son and a daughter. What does that mean? Well, you know, I, I really don't want to get too deep with what I'm about to say here, so just, I won't be long. But when, when this was written, when, the, when the, the scriptures, the New Testament was written, in a, it was written in a Roman culture, uh, adoption meant something different than maybe what it means today. Today, sometimes we can, I don't think we should, but uh, we sometimes think of adoption in terms of, of, of rejection. And, and sometimes, unfortunately, people feel rejected if their parents give them up for adoption. I don't think you should. It's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying sometimes culture puts it in that picture. But in Rome, adoption had a whole different, whole different setting. And that was the context in which, for example, Ephesians chapter 1, where Paul wrote, he said, He chose us in Him, in Jesus, before the foundation of the world, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus uh, to Himself. And so he's talking about adoption. And, and they understood when he wrote this, he, you know, Rome was the empire of that time. And in that culture, adoption was a process whereby uh, rich ruling families would, if they didn't have a child that could carry on the lineage for them, they would go and seek out a child that they could adopt that could carry on the power for them. Uh, for example, let me give an example. We've, maybe you've heard of Julius Caesar or Caesar Augustus. Well, Julius Caesar didn't have a son to take over for him, so he adopted a, a, a young boy named Octavius whose name was changed, and he became Caesar Augustus, a famous character in the Scriptures. He was adopted. And, and so, and there are many other cases throughout the, throughout the hundreds of years of the Roman Empire, other, many other emper, emperors or Caesars that we have heard of, they were adopted. So, in other words, adoption was viewed as something special. You wanted to be adopted. It meant you were, I mean, if you were adopted, you were the chosen one. You were the, you were the special one. And, and so imagine if you were, if you were adopted, it would put value. In other words, what I'm getting at is it's put value on you. In today's, I guess in today's world, you'd almost think of it in, you know, in the, in the sports world, uh, sports teams, they go out and they, they scout out and uh, the best players as young players, and then they, they draft them onto their team. And, that, and when they draft them, they're saying, we value your talent, we value your skill, we value your mindset, and we want you on our team because you, we think you'll give us the best chance at winning. That's what adoption was a picture of uh, in the time of Rome when Paul was writing these scriptures. When, so when he said God, God adopted you, he chose you. In other words, it, 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 the adoption wasn't a rejection. It was God saying, I have such value and esteem in you that I want you a part of my family. And, and the reason why that's so important is... Uh, we, sometimes we talk about how being part of God's family, there's an inheritance and we can expect blessing because of that. And that's all true. But it also speaks to value. 
Pastor Peter said off the outset that we all carry in our, whether it be our wallet or now smartphone or Facebook account, whatever, yeah. we have a picture of ourselves. And, and, and even if you're in your wallet, maybe it's even just a driver's license. That's our physical picture. But there's another picture that we all carry, and I would say it's an even more important picture, and it's a picture that we carry of ourselves in our heart. Many people don't know why they don't like themselves, and it, it, it has pro oftentimes nothing to do with their external picture. Uh, it has to do with how they see themselves in their heart or in their self-image. And, 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 and our self-images can be flawed for a variety of reasons. Pastor, you cut me off if I'm going too long. You're just no, no, I, I like what okay. you're doing. I'm okay. just enjoying it. All right, all right. In fact, but, this scripture, you know, Ephesians 1 here, having God having predetermined us to adoption, it's really coming alive when you're talking, so I'm just enjoying it. I envision it. him like a <laughs> good scouting team scouting us out, like a, t like a sport team yeah. scouts out a player in advance. He did that for you. He, that speaks of his value. But back to our self, you know, our self-images can be flawed for so many reasons. Some people through it, maybe they failed. Someone failed them or they failed themselves, and so they, they, the, 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 the artwork of their image, the picture they carry of themselves in their heart becomes flawed, and they see themselves as a failure. So when they look at themselves, they see the picture in their heart, failure. And so as a result, they continue with that same process of behavior, keep making the same mistake over and over, or if someone's been victimized. Um, we feel, you know, it's, it's a terrible situation, but if we see ourselves through that abuse or that manipulation, uh, you know, if our image of ourselves is victim, we carry about the sense of hopelessness, despair. Uh, it's because of the way we see ourselves. Even, here's something I found fascinating researching this topic, that even individuals with very high goals, high, you call them high achievers, A-type personalities, oftentimes they can have a poor self-image as well because we can set the bar so high for ourselves that we never reach it. And if the bar is unrealistically high, you know, the level of achievement that we want for ourselves that we can never attain it, we always feel like we're we're falling short. And so on the outside, you might say, well, they have it all going together. They, you know, they're achieving so much, but inwardly, their image of, them, of themselves, it could be one of not good enough. And so it's so important, the image we carry of ourselves, because until we accept the image we carry or like the image of ourselves we carry in our heart or approve or find the value that God's placed on us, we look for that approval or we look for that acceptance in others or in our positions or in the circumstances of life. And as long as the value we place on the picture we carry of ourselves, as long as we attach that value to what others say or the positions we have, you know, what people think of you come and go, it's up and down, your positions in life, nobody can hold on to a position forever. It's someday you have to, so if it's attached to those things, you know, the value we carry of ourselves is gonna be very, very volatile. That wasn't God's plan, it wasn't God's best. That's why he adopted us as his children because in that, no matter what goes on in life, whether we have the position or don't have the position, we find value in who God says we are through this adoption process. You, you know, Nathan, this is such good psychology that you're doing. I know you're not a psychologist. You're I'm a not, preacher no. of the gospel. <laughs> but, but frankly, and I'm not saying anything against psychologists, but I'm saying if for people, you might save yourself a lot of money and time just listening. I wish we could just rewind what you said there, but I hope you have your, uh, you can copy this and, and listen to what you're saying there because when people see themselves, I mean, I'm reading this here that God predetermined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ himself. You know, this is a whole new self-image. Now, you know, time is running away because you're flowing with it here. So I want to take you to uh, just kind of maybe fast forward a little bit because there's much more to say about this. But you were saying in the case of Julius Caesar, who adopted Octavius, which, uh, and then he became Caesar Augustus, and, and that we know from the story of the birth of Jesus. So adoption, there's even like a royalty aspect of it. You, 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 you adopt, you're being accepted into something often greater than yourself. Obviously, maybe you didn't come from a family that was so great, and so a greater family adopts you. And, and so talk about that, about being adopted into a royal family and with all the trappings of royalty. I don't know whether you have a scepter and a crown. Or I don't know what aspect you want to well, pick up of it, but, but talk about that a little bit. Well, certainly. I mean, the scriptures say that we're a royal priest. Once we are adopted into God's family, we have been adopted into a royal family. He is the king of kings. And that's why the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 2 uh, that we've been crowned with honor. Just like, just like that adoption process in Rome. I mean, adoption was a way to power in Rome. Well, God adopted us to be, to be royalty. And he says, I put a crown of honor on you. And that crown, it, 
you see, there's a reason why the crown is, on, is put on the head in the terms, spiritual terms, because it's how we see ourselves. In other words, God wants us to see it when we look at ourselves uh, in, the, you know, in, the, in the eye of our heart or in the way we see our, our self-image. He wants us to see a crown on ourselves. In other words, he wants us to see us as favored and honored and say, because when we see ourselves as favored, it changes how we act. It changes how we behave. Uh, and so God wants us to, and you know, the scriptures tell us, don't cast away your confident, confidence. Other scriptures say, hold on to the crown that God has given to you because God, Jesus came that we'd have an abundant life. And the way that we enjoy and have that abundant life is by seeing ourselves in the value that God put on us. In other words, when we see, that, when we see this self-image that we carry of ourselves, see ourselves with that crown on, see ourselves as royalty, because that's the value that God placed on us. He scouted us out before, before we were even a twinkle in our father's eye. He had already scouted us out and said, he's so good, he's so valuable. He or she is so good, so valuable. I want them a part of my family. I want them to be royals with me ruling and reigning here on earth. You, you know, Nathan, I want to ask you more because I, I thought of a scripture verse that says, let no man take your crown. So I'm thinking, what, what are, are the things, persons maybe that come into your life or, or uh, situations that come into your life that kind of wants to take the crown away? Because obviously that what you said is you have the crown on your head. So you can you see it. You look at yourself in the mirror and the Bible talks a lot about looking in the mirror. That's, that's often used as an illustration in the Bible. Yeah. So you see yourself as adopted into God's royal family. So I want to ask you about different things that can take away our crown and different things that steal our crown or even if there are people that can take our crown. But first, I want to just make sure because I can see the way this is going. You're flowing here, my dear brother Nathan. So I want to just get to these. If you, if you want to get this free booklet, I, I, I'm going to tell you in a moment how you can receive it. We weren't going to continue to offer this, but people keep asking for it. And people are telling us how much it's meant to them. We printed another, I think 20,000 or something. We just had given away everything we had. So this is free and postage paid. We'll tell you how to, how to get that. And then I have another product as well. So let's roll with that right now. Peter Youngren presents the Himself Booklet by A.B. Simpson, The Glorious Reality of Christ in You. Peter is offering this as a free gift, so please call now to order your personal copy. Call 1-800-275-2713 and request your free gift today. Now, now you notice that phone number is different than our Grace Prayer and Partner Center line. Uh, so, so it's still there. I think our producer is putting it up. One eight hundred two seven five two seven one three. I think it is. Uh, so many phone numbers to remember. But that's a special that will get you to that free gift line. So, so, so uh, make note of that. And then also, can you see what God sees for you? I, I love this this teaching, and it starts with six teachings on this album. It starts with on the first one what the architect sees. See, when there's nothing, when there's a building, there's no walls, there's no foundation, the architect already sees it. And who's the architect for you? And, and, but, but get a hold of that, and you'll see that on the bottom of the screen. Our producer is putting a little kind of a little line there with some information how you can order that online. Enough said about those products. And so, so Nathan, we were talking about that we are adopted into God's family, that it's a positive thing. And especially from the biblical perspective, whatever we think, if somebody was adopted and they love their adopted parents, others maybe feel like, oh, my real parents gave me up. But in the Roman biblical setting, it was a very positive thing. You went looking for someone to adopt who could carry on your legacy and your leadership. And, and then we talked about being adopted into royalty. And then we, you got to this illustration of the crown, which the Bible says. So talk a little bit more about the crown and maybe some things that can uh, some influences in life steal that might crown. steal our crown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. go ahead. Well, abs I mean, there's different, th I mentioned failure, even disappointments, but a big one is, is the approval or disapproval of people. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge thing that can steal our crown, steal, in other words, the image we see of ourselves. And if we're not, if we don't know how valued we are by God, that's why these resources that Pastor Peter's making available are so valuable. Even the book himself, it's huge because we see ourselves in the image of Christ. We could go on forever. But the approval of others, um, for example, I, heard, I read a story of a lady, and she had been victimized as a young girl. And so as a result, she did not see herself the way God saw her. She did not see herself as royalty. She had a poor self-image. And so she sought to find the approval or, or to find acceptance of that self-image through the approval of other people. She be, actually became a believer, joined a church, but she still 
didn't see herself the way God saw her. Unfortunately, she did, hadn't, hadn't accepted that new self-image. And so as a result, she, to find value for her the way she saw herself or for her image, she sought position in the church. And so to get that position in her particular church, she had to be elected. And so to get that election, she did everything right. She made all the right people happy. She you know, bought the right gifts. She you know, polished the right apples. You know what? She did everything just, just right. And in the end, after a long process of making all the right people happy, she was elected, only to discover that that, getting that position made her even more miserable because by getting the position, now she felt she had to continue keeping the same people happy to hold on to the power, which made things all the more, or else they would reject her and made things all the more miserable. In other words, we must have value in ourselves because if the value comes from somebody else, it's going to come and go, and we're going to be on this never-ending cycle of trying to get, get, get their approval. We have the approval of men come and go. Jesus said in the scriptures, he said, I, you, whether you approve me or disapprove me, it doesn't mean one thing. My destiny is sure because I know who my father is. And it's the same attitude that God wants us to have. He is our father. He has adopted us. So whether a person or an individual rejects or accepts you, it really makes no difference to the who you are and God's plan and purpose for your life. So you're sitting there at home, know that for you. That, that yes, people are, I can't promise you that people aren't going to reject you. The Apostle Paul had many rejections. So even following Christ, people are going to reject you. They're not going to always approve of you. Maybe even in the church, that's going to happen. It happened, read the book of Acts. But that does not change God's plan for you and doesn't change his value. So we must be rooted in this understanding of the value he placed on us. We've been adopted. We have a, we're part of a royal family. We have a crown on. And so sometimes we've got to remind ourselves, and that's part of keeping the crown on, as you, as you pointed out. Hold let, on to the let, crown. Let me ask you that once in a while. As I'm interrupting you. So the, so the, the pursuit of, of approval of others uh. to make ourselves feel good is one of the things that really... And we all want to be approved by others, but of it's course, an unhealthy approval. But it reduces us, and, and, and we become slaves to the opinions of others. What about totally. if somebody really has a failure? Let's say they, it's not, they actually fail. Could that be something that, that kind of mars the picture of yourself? You talked about that picture you carry in your wallet. Like, for example, right now, my passport picture. I'm not very happy with it, but I was such a rush to get a new passport that I, I said, I'd take the picture. I look... I look crazy. Under. But anyhow, I show it anyhow when I go into a country. So, but the picture in a heart, the picture in a heart, what about if someone had a failure? Would they, could that be something? Absolutely. Certainly. I mean, it, you know, uh, it's like when you're, if your passport was condemned at, at the border. You know, many times through, with mis, through mistakes, we condemn ourselves. And the picture we see of ourselves is one of condemned. It's almost like there was a con- you know, a stamp put on us, condemn, and, and to be, but that we're condemned. And we see ourselves, and we see ourselves as condemned, it takes all our strength and boldness away, and we walk around very timidly, have no faith uh, for, for life. That's, this is part of the adoption. In fact, in Galatians chapter 4, the scripture talking about our adoption into the family of God, Galatians 4 and 5, the scripture says, God sent Jesus to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his own children. So the adoption in that saying, in the adoption into God's family, he freed us from our relationship to the law. In other words, what does the law do? The law demands we do certain things, and if we don't keep those demands, we are condemned, we're guilty. And so part of this adoption, we're taken out of the family of the law and put into the family of grace where there is no more guilt and no more condemnation. And so we have a new father. You could say our old father was Mr. Law, our new father is Mr. Grace, and we... and. One thing I, I don't, we're running out of time here, so I got to be quick. But in the, one important thing back to Rome, in the Roman culture, the father had total 100% control over the children and family. He was the, posse- he owned them like possessions. We don't have that in our culture here today, but that's the way it was. And so in the adoption process, a child, they would, there, would be a, there would be money exchanged. They would go before the Roman magistrates. It would be an official thing, but the child would leave the 100 and absolute control and possession of one father and enter the control and possession of another father. That, ha- that is describing what happened to us. We were once under 100% control of Mr. Law, if you will, or the law. That, and now we have been, through adoption, brought into a new family, the family of Mr. Grace. Mr. Law, our old father, has no more right to speak into our lives. Therefore, we must not, not only are we free from the voice of guilt and condemnation, but we must not listen to that old father because he lost all rights when the adoption happened. Hallelujah. Our new father is one who is Jesus, who is, the, who is Grace. He has 100% control of us through this adoption. You know, you know, Nathan, while you're talking, of course, what you're doing, this is what real preaching is. We read a scripture and then we expound on it. That's what you're doing here. 
And, and when it says the law, you know, if you're not a Jewish person, of course, then the law of Moses may seem a little bit far off for you, but we can apply whenever the Bible talks about the law, it means any religious system. It could be whatever, whatever religion you're from or whatever system that you try to follow to be a good person. Now, that is on the one side, and it said here, it says you quoted Galatians 4, 5, uh, those who were under this religious system, well, they've been taken out of that and they've been adopted into this royal family. But then, Nathan, I just, I know we got two minutes to go, so I got to quickly hear this. And because of this, because this adoption has occurred, God sent forth His Spirit into our hearts, and we say, Abba, Father. So we get into a whole new relationship with God, which is this Abba, Abba. You know, we, we were just in Israel, and sometimes there you see a little, little toddler running around there in old Jerusalem, and he's grabbing the, his father's pant leg, and he says, Abba, 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 Abba. You know, so, so yeah, yeah. it means Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Uh, praise God. I, this is so awesome. But Nathan, we need to just, I, I want us to pray over these prayer requests and be put, I guess our prayer request table is over here. So I got to reach over here. But could you, could you pray right now? And, and, and we got, you got another minute or so to talk to people, but pray and let's believe God. And you call with your prayer request. Call the Grace Prayer and Partner Center. And we want to hear your prayer request. We write it down. We take everything very, very uh, personal, every in individual request. And, and it's very important to us and most of all, it's important to God. So go ahead and pray for people and, right and now. And Pastor Peter, the answer to these prayers is found in our adoption because we've been adopted joint heirs with Christ. We have an inheritance. So I'm Amen. believing based on this adoption. Uh, in fact, these, I, 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 they these, strapped some of them together so I didn't they even get into that I'm going to give some of them to I you right here and I, I'm going to take some and cradle them in my so arms There's only so much here. time to teach, so I didn't teach them, but, but we have a we have an inheritance, and it's part and of the adoption. That's the basis of why we pray, Absolutely. but we better pray now. So you believe Father, with us at home. Father, we thank you for every prayer request for, uh, that's you, represented Jesus. here, for every health need, for every family situation, for Glory everyone who's believing God. for a salvation, for a family member. Father, I thank you that you answer our prayers based on this adoption that you've provided for us through Hello. Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus that every prayer request will be met, sick bodies healed, you, family Jesus. members saved. Father, I thank you for financial restoration. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for favor and open doors in Jesus' name. Amen. That's right. We're not praying as, as a couple of beggars here begging God. We are sons. We are adopted into this family. And on that basis, we thank God for healing, for life, for every good thing in Jesus' name. And so I, I tell you, we're down to the last wire here, so to speak. That, that booklet is available for free. Can you see what God sees? We have a special prize on this six CD teaching. So get a hold of that. Nathan, I'm so grateful you shared with thanks, us today. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you so very much. And keep calling. And thank you for everybody who's helping us to take the gospel to the world. You know, that is front and center here. We love to bring this message of the finished work of Jesus to Christians, but also to people of all religions. Keep calling. You are loved. Thank you. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the good news of Jesus Christ to thousands who have never heard, call 1-877-974-7223. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at PO Box 2108, Vista, California, 92085-2108 or 190 Railside Road, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, M3A 1A3. Together, let's give everyone a chance to hear the gospel.